guys, this is Dave Mosher, producer for Discovery Space at space.discovery.com. That is the official Discovery Channel website all about space, and this is your weekly wrap-up where I take you through the three biggest things that happened in space last week. If you're on YouTube, you can get to my blog, Space Disco, by clicking that More Info button to your right. And if you're on uh, iTunes, maybe you're watching this from your iPod, go to blogs.discovery.com forward slash space underscore disco, and that'll take you right there. Uh, that being said, let's get to those three big things. By the way, this is the HD version. I hope it works out. If not, then I'll look really stupid, but I'm using a brand new webcam to do this. So that said, uh, this actually didn't happen last week, but it has been, so to speak. This is Comet Lulin. Check this out. This is a Wiley Green Comet heading all the way up from the Kuiper Belt, which is ton very, very far away from, from the Earth and the rest of the solar system, the very edge of the solar system. This comet's coming in for a visit, and it's going to get pretty close to Earth. And all this green color you see here, that's cyanide gas. That's poisonous cyanide gas. In fact, this is representative of what the early solar system probably looked like, all the stuff in here. So that's kind of cool. It's kind of like getting a, a glimpse at the past of the solar system before everything really formed. And by the way, this is a, another picture of that same comet. So here you go, just for so you can see both of them. This is the Swift uh, X-ray telescope version of it, and you can see this ultraviolet blue here, and then this X-ray red, and that's just the gas coming off of it. And what that shows us, this picture right here, is that more than 800 gallons of water per second is being spewed off of that comet. That's an incredible amount of water. Very impressive. So that's the first piece of news. Look to your east on f Tuesday, February 24th, just below Saturn, and you should be able to see that green comet. It's going to be really far away. It's going to it would help you to have some binoculars or even a low-power telescope, just anything. Um, and it's going to be pretty low on the horizon, so keep a lookout for that, and you should see Comet Lewin. Uh, next bit of news I have for you is this. This is the Kepler spacecraft. That's launching in a couple weeks, and at Discovery Space, uh, we're going to have two big wide-angle packages for you all about the spacecraft and all about aliens, too. So this week it's going to be aliens, and next week it's going to be about finding terrestrial planets, meaning Earth-like planets. This is the job of this spacecraft. And what it, what it is, it's not actually a telescope. It looks like, you know, kind of like Hubble, but it's a photometer. What it's looking for are planets passing in front of stars, causing the light just to dim just a little bit and it's going to pick that up and it can detect several planets at once because it's so sensitive so this is really cool it's going to help us find probably hopefully hundreds of uh, terrestrial planets out there within a 3,000 light year wide sort of radius uh, from the earth so that's really cool looking forward to that and speaking of another Kepler named spacecraft check this out this is Jules Verne this is the automated transfer vehicle and they send this thing up, they've only sent one up so far, and that was the Jules Verne. The next one they're naming is Johannes Kepler. So they're naming it after all these famous space people, right? So this thing can carry up 17,000 pounds of cargo to the space station. And in fact, remember last week I was telling you guys about space junk. Here's the picture. This is all the, the trackable pieces of space junk that we have floating around. And uh, the, the cool thing about the Jules Verne and this new Kepler one, which is pretty much a carbon copy of this spacecraft, is that you can burn them up in the atmosphere. You can just toss them away. Uh, sort of like, you know, a, a tin can. You know, you store your beans in it, pour them out, and then just throw it away. Check out this video. This is the Jules Verne spacecraft breaking up upon reentry. By the way, this is sped up quite a bit, so I could uh, fit it into this short video. I don't want to waste all your time. But you'll see it just breaking apart. Really, really cool. It looks very fantastic. And uh, we'll expect to see the same with the next um, automated transfer vehicle. And the third bit of news I have for you is about where you live, the Milky Way. Check this out. This is the Milky Way, or at least a, an artist's rendition of what it might look like. You know, it's kind of got this bar in the middle and all these uh, uh, spiral arms coming off. Well, the cool thing is that there have there was there used to be a satellite called Hipparchos, and Hipparchos looked at hundreds of thousands of stars, actually millions of stars, and it traced their movement ever so slightly across the sky. And what scientists have found is that the stars in the Milky Way ripple almost like you would throw a rock into a pond. And they can detect that rippling occurring in the Milky Way, which is really cool. And pretty soon they're going to be launching another satellite, and that's going to be called Gaia, and that's going to track more than a billion stars so that the measurements we have of this rippling effect going on in the Milky Way are going to be even more sensitive. But that's really cool. That helps push stars together, you know, and, and possibly habitable star systems closer to the Earth. So that's the uh, three things for you, and I hope you enjoyed, and thanks for tuning in.